From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. And good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on the new news on this Friday. I'm Andrea Lutz. This afternoon, we're following the money as the first wave of stimulus checks could arrive in bank accounts by this weekend. President Joe Biden signed the American Rescue Plan into law a day earlier, allowing for faster distribution. And the White House says checks could be delivered over the next several weeks. But there are some changes to this round of private debt. That is that it could be deducted for people who have a judgment against them. Banks can also deduct overdraft fees from those checks. New at noon, Montana schools are getting a huge chunk of that money from the COVID-19 relief bill. The Montana Office of Public Instruction says about $382 million will be used to address learning loss during the pandemic. That means things like summer school and after school programs, among other things. It also includes about $10 million to the state and money to help homeless students. Each district will decide where their money goes. A child tax credit included in the stimulus package could have a profound impact on poverty in America. Individuals who qualify could get $3,600 for a child under the age of six. And experts say that money could lift 4 million children out of poverty. The credit could come to parents this early July and the benefits will only be around for about a year. But Democrats are expected to push to make the tax credit permanent. A new rental assistance program could help lift many Montanans out of a tough financial situation. But first, they do have to apply. The Montana Department of Commerce's housing division is urging people to prepare and take advantage of the new rental assistance program. The program is meant to help people impacted by this pandemic. The state received about $200 million from the federal government for the program. Overnight, COVID-19 restrictions in Lewis and Clark County have expired. However, those masks, they're still required in the county. Health officials say the decision to lift restrictions comes from a variety of factors like health care capacity, case investigations and community compliance. Bars, restaurants, gyms and casinos will be able to operate at full capacity with no limit on their hours and there's no limit on events. But again, those masks and that mandate still applies for anyone over the age of five. In Cascade County, there could be a lift of restrictions in less than a week. Those with the health department say as of Wednesday, the county had a virus case rate of less than 10 per 100,000 people. COVID restrictions, including the mask mandate, will end once the county goes to two straight weeks with that same rate. If the current case rate then goes up before next Wednesday, well, that two week process starts all over again. Gallatin County emergency management officials say it's not too early to start planning ahead for spring flooding. Flooding usually caused by obstructed waterways that back the flow of water. And so landowners should make sure their ditches and culverts are free of debris. If you are concerned about a risk of flooding, well, Gallatin County management and emergency management officials say you should buy flood insurance because it's not covered by homeowners insurance. Officials say it's all about being prepared in advance. You start seeing the water coming up. You see the conditions lining up. We have lots of rain for coming for several days. It's warm temperatures. We've got lots of snow in the mountains and the, those waterways start coming up. Then be prepared and implement your plan early to protect your property. So Gallatin County emergency management officials say there's no way to predict when spring flooding will hit. That's why the department again is stressing just get that plan in order as early as you can. All right, so take a look at this ominous dark clouds were seen rolling into Sydney this week as the Australian city experienced a supercell storm. Eyewitness video captured this abnormal weather condition in Moore Park. It's a suburb of Sydney. Supercell storms are the least common of the most dangerous of four categories of thunderstorms because of the extreme weather they generate and they can generate pretty destructive winds, giant hail, flash flooding and sometimes even tornadoes. But mm. seeing that video sure is interesting to see. Now I want to point out that that's sped up. That's not actual real time there. People may be going, my <laughs> goodness, it's Armageddon. No, it's sped up, but yeah, those are very rare, but very violent storms. I've been through a couple yeah. down south and they're not fun to go through. I'll Doesn't seem like it would be. No, it's not. Uh, you know, and speaking of storms, how about maybe the biggest storm they've seen in Denver over the last nine years? 
That's what's happening. Now, let's take a look. Now, this, this could affect parts of our area, and I'll tell you why in the main forecast coming up. But we do have a very cold upper-level low sliding from the southwest. It's going to be mixing with a stationary front parked across the central plains. And it's going to bring significant snow, uh, snow with that storm uh, across central Rockies and central high plains through the weekend. We could see anywhere from two to four feet of snow in the higher elevations. Snowfall rates could be one to two inches per hour. Winds could produce uh, near blizzard conditions. I'm sure travel is going to be unlikely along the interstates that could uh, be shut down and flights could be canceled as well. Now, some of us may see some of that, maybe rain and snow off of that low as we get into the weekend. And I'll tell you where here in just a bit. But right now we're looking fantastic out there. The weekend so far shaping up to be awesome. We'll take a look at that with the main forecast coming up. Andrea. That sounds good, Miller. Thank you so much. OK, so new at noon, Montana has graduated 15 more Montana High Patrol troopers just this week. It happened during the 70th annual graduation ceremony, of course, at Helena Civic Center. MHP Colonel Steve Lavin and Attorney General Austin Knutson addressed the graduates before pinning on those badges. Of the troopers, nine are from Montana and six came from out of state and they all successfully passed that rigorous training. Of course, all of that began last August. In Missoula, the Johnson Street Homeless Shelter, which has been extended, is getting some mixed reviews. Proponents say the facility is providing shelter during the cold months as well as vaccinating staffs, staff and clients, but some who live nearby and businesses say they're not happy. There's been some complaints over shouting, trash and vandalism. There is a neighborhood meeting today to talk about some of those issues and the Pavarello Center says it plans to discuss a neighborhood cleanup for sometime in April. Gallatin County and those who oversee rest homes have endured a long and difficult year with the pandemic, but there's some good vibes on the horizon, according to officials. Well, that's because doctors say fully vaccinated people can meet face to face. So just months ago, many in our state's rest homes, it was a completely different story. Now many facilities are able to accept visitors soon, and the vaccinations have played a big part in that, getting them to this point. Starting today, family and friends will be able to visit this Bozeman facility by appointment. We do have an update this afternoon on the status of the Butte, Butte Folk Festival. Well, organizers say they're going to have to postpone the event again this year. It's a free three day music festival and it was scheduled to begin in July, but organizers say they don't have enough time to book the performers and vendors and technicians for the event. Each year that event brings in more than 100,000 people to Butte. Organizers say they're not, though, quitting on the event. This isn't going away. As long as, at least, as long as I have anything, uh, any involvement in it, uh, and there, but the, I'm not alone. There are so many people who have the passion and the energy and the talent to. We're going to keep this going as long as people continue to come. And they still do have it planned a little bit farther out. The 2022 festival is scheduled for July 8th through the 10th. We'll see what happens. There is more ahead on this Friday version of the new news, including how some of our Montana veterans in Billings are getting their strength back, even though the pandemic tried to slow it down. We're going to take you to an adaptive performance center and Miller Robson's back in with a look at your statewide weather forecast.